guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have a doll repaint video for you guys today. If you guys saw my doll repaint supply and doll haul that I posted a couple months ago, then you would know that I picked up two of the new Rainbow High dolls. Today's the day, y'all. We're gonna be repainting one of them. I picked up Sunny and Poppy and I decided that Sunny was too cute to rip apart. She's really cute. She looks like Sailor Moon. Like, what am I supposed to do? It's like... I'm obsessed with her. Probably gonna give her a new face up at some point. I also really like Poppy as well, but I like Poppy a little bit less, but I still really like Poppy. When I was looking at these dolls, I was like, is there anything I can do that's gonna like make them look better? I feel like they're hard to customize because they're already just really high quality. I wasn't sure really what I wanted to do with her, but then I did some brainstorming and I was like, let's make her a pastel magical girl witch. Jumping right into it, let's talk about the body of these dolls. So I really like the shape. It's a pear shape and it's something that's a little bit more rare with fashion dolls. However, I feel like this body has some glaringly obvious missed opportunities. For example, the legs look double jointed. Uh, they're not for some reason. And to make them double jointed, it's an incredibly easy fix that I just don't understand why MGA didn't do. Also, the neck peg is very limited the head only goes back and forth and I'm just a little confused as to why MGA manufactured their neck peg in the way that they did. I try to fix this later and it turns into a bit of a shit show, so warning. <laughs> it, it gets kind of bad towards the end um, and I just get kind of frustrated. So yeah, stay tuned. Anyway, back to prepping the doll. I cut off all her hair and I'm saving her hair for another project because it's really nice quality. I put her head into hot water and then I pop it off. The heads of these Rainbow High dolls are very hard when you get them, but they soften up really well with hot water. To get the hair plugs out of her head, I scrape around the inside of her head with a screwdriver. Typically, I try to finagle the hair out of her head through her neck hole with needle nose pliers. However, today we're going to be giving her some inset eyes. So I'm going to be cutting a giant hole into the back of her head. So I'm going to be taking the hair out like that. Getting the eyes out was a little bit annoying. These dolls have a plastic covering over their eyes on the inside, so I had to cut that away with my X-Acto blade, and I had to reheat her head up and kind of like push her eyes out. But after working at it for a bit, they did come out. Um, the eyes look totally strange. The lashes are like attached to the eyeballs, and I just, I just don't like it, okay? Uh, but I take the paint off her face with some acetone nail polish remover. Moving on to the eyes, we're gonna be making her some resin eyes. I found these two molds and I figured one of them would probably fit. So I'm cleaning off the inside with a Q-tip to get rid of any lint. Since I want the base of the eyes to be white, I'm mixing together UV resin and white alcohol ink. I'm doing a couple of pumps of this and then I'm mixing them together really well. When you're pouring the resin into the mold, you kind of want to do it like carefully because from my understanding, if you do it real fast, you get more bubbles. So I'm very carefully, slowly filling in my mold with my white resin. Taking a Q-tip, I spin that around in the mold just to make sure if there are any bubbles, this will pop them. Then we just pop them underneath the UV lamp. I'd recommend making a couple different pairs of resin eyes just because it's really easy to mess up resin. Like you can have a perfect base, but then like two steps down with the resin, just have a giant bubble in it and it kind of completely ruins the eye. So sort of keep that in mind. I did uh, one, two, three, four pairs uh, just so I had options. I put a little dollop of epoxy sculpt into the base. I then took the back end of a Q-tip and smashed the doll down so it's flat. To create the pupils, so for one of them I wanted to make like a little gem for the pupil because I thought it would be real cute. So I took this half back pearl that's red and like sort of duochrome and I smushed that into the middle of the eye. For the others I just took a dotting tool and I smushed that into the middle of the eye and sort of spun it around to get a circular effect.
To create a realistic textured look to the eye, I'm taking a needle and I'm drawing lines radiating out from the pupil. Now to color them, so I'm coloring them all with pastels and I'm laying down the base lightest color of the pastel first. I'm doing a couple different colors for the eyes just to have some variety. I didn't really know what I wanted at this point, uh, so I'm trying out a few things. The next pastel color I lay down is slightly deeper than the base color. This is just so that the eyes have a little bit of depth to them and don't look too flat. For the pupil, I'm going in with the deepest shade of pastel. Finally, moving on to add some resin to these eyes. So I'm taking a little bit of ink that is whatever the base color is, so in this case it's purple, and I'm mixing that with a ton of resin, and I'm laying that onto the pastels. What this does is it sinks into those little grooves that we made with the needle and gives the eyes a little bit more variety and shading. You wanna do a very light coat of this, just enough so that it will sink into those really tiny crevices. We then pop those puppies into the UV lamp. I'm doing a couple dots of gold metallic watercolor onto the eyes because it's pretty and realistic. I would recommend if you guys have acrylics doing that with those instead of watercolors because the resin can reactivate the watercolors. It can get kind of messy. I just don't have metallic acrylic paint. I put resin over top of those watercolors and popped them in my UV lamp and then I put a layer of gold sparkles on top of that. For the eyes that I created a pupil using the dotting tool, I decided that I wanted the pupil to be a little bit darker on each one of those. So I mixed some resin with a Perlux pigment that's a deep purple, and I created a new pupil with that. For the last detail on the eyes, I painted a limbo ring around each eye, and I did this off camera because it's just really difficult. It's just like you have to hold it real close to your head, and I domed the eyes with a last coat of UV resin. And we're done. We're finally on to my favorite part. We're just trying out all these dang eyeballs. So I really like this pink pair. I think it's real cute. My cat is hella loud. I'm sorry if you can hear. Um, I also really like this purple pair. Girl. Um, but I had this little drippy defect from the resin, which wasn't cute. And it felt a little bit funny. So I didn't end up going with these. And the last pair that I try on is crazy looking. It's just way too small. Um, I ended up going with the heterochromia pair because they were just like kind of the best. These ones look crazy. Don't do this. <laughs> um, I don't know what size these eye molds are. So if you're curious, I don't know. None of my molds are labeled. <laughs> I'm doing this doll's process in a very similar order to how I would do a BJD. So I'm gonna be working on her wig before I do the face up. I wrapped a saran wrap around her head to protect her head from the glue that I'm gonna be putting on her head. And then I wrapped a mesh fabric around her head securing it with a rubber band. This is Elmer's glue. I did about five coats of this over the mesh fabric and I let it dry overnight. After that's all nice and dry, I sketched in her hairline that I'm going to be cutting out. Since I chose the heterochromia eyes, I decided to fully commit to the half and half theme. So I'm using this mint green and pink acrylic yarn and I'm cutting them all haphazardly and tying them to this stupid brass knuckle, bane of my existence, scarf holder, bottom of an ice skate bag handle. These are all the things that people have told me that this thing is and I truly do not care and I need to buy a new thing to tie yarn to because it's a very controversial item in my videos. I'm leaning towards that it is a brass knuckle decoration because it's plastic and nobody's hands are this big. Unless you're like a giant, your hands aren't this big. So it's not actual brass knuckles. 
Anyway, moving along, I am brushing the yarn out from the bottom with a cap brush. I curled the yarn by wrapping it around a chopstick and heating it up with my hair straightener and I created a weft with Elmer's glue applying that to the top of each chunks of the hair. I glued the wefts to the wig cap with Elmer's glue all working from the bottom up to the part. For the part, I applied a weft backwards and then flipped it. This is how her wig turned out. It's very curly. I like it. It's crazy, but I think it suits like her little witchy self. Finally, onto the face up. So I spray the doll with Mr. Super Clear three times, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask, and we start painting. I start by sketching out the eyes, which is really similar to how I start every doll face up. However, I'm treating this doll very similarly to how I would treat a BJD, which is a little bit different than how I would treat a fashion doll. So I'm basically creating the eyes around these giant gaping inset hole eyes that she has um, and sort of creating the shape from there. I feel like you have a little bit less freedom when you're doing a doll with inset eyes, but it's a little bit easier because you have a giant space there of where the white of the eyes are going to be. You don't have to really figure that out or make it even. It's already even and there for you. So you're just sort of trying to make the waterline even on both sides and the eyelid. Also, in my opinion, one of the most stressful and also one of my favorite parts of painting fashion dolls is adding the details to the iris of the eyes because you want that area to be as detailed or impressive as you can make it because that is the first place where people look when they're looking at a doll because it's just the first place that people's eyes go to. So I find that this or a doll with inset eyes face-ups are quite a bit less stressful because and also just faster because they don't have that area so it's sort of taking out the most difficult part which by the way if you guys have started creating dolls and you're just really not happy with where the irises on your dolls are at and like the level of detail and everything um maybe look into creating inset eyes because i don't want to say that they're easier than painting irises on dolls um <laughs> but they kind of are it's just easier to make them look really detailed and nice and you already have like the mold there for you for making them even so um, it's a little, it's a little bit easier. <laughs> I begin the shading around her face by blushing it with pinks, reds, purples, browns, blues, and whites. I applied tons of reddish pink pastel to the lips. This doll's lips are like so big and the head in general is so big compared to what I'm used to. So I'm just taking a little bit of time to fully cover in that space. I apply light blue pan pastel around her forehead, the inner corner of her eyes, her chin, her upper lip. It looks really intense here, but after I spray it a couple times with the MSC, it looks way more subdued. With a like deep fuchsia pastel and a q-tip, I'm tapping this onto the middle of her upper and lower lip. This just creates a kind of bitten lip look and it's cute.
I add lines of lip wrinkles to the upper and lower lip with a deep red pencil. I add a line of white to the middle of the waterline and the inner corner and some rose gold metallic watercolor pencils to the outer and innermost corner. I really like how the rainbow high dolls have their mouth open, so I'm just adding a little bit of white colored pencil to the middle of her mouth. And veins, you guys know I like veins, so I'm just adding branch-like pencil marks with a really light hand around the eyes and the forehead. I lost a bit of the clarity of the eyelid lines when I was going in and adding all of the highlights and definitions to the eyes, so I'm taking a deep purple pencil and I'm just going over those original lines that I laid down at the first layer of the face up. I also brighten up the eyes with highlights around the eyes and the lips with my white watercolor pencil. For the brows, I'm just matching them to the colors of her hair, but making them a little bit darker. I put so much macro pearl experiment all over her head. Her head is like so big. Welcome to Rainbow High, we got big heads. I'd probably fit in there, honestly. The last stage of highlights is going in with white watercolor pencil, and I'm putting this on top of certain specific areas of where the white watercolor pencil was so just to create more of a pop in the highlight. Taking a deep purple pearl X pigment I apply that to her lips and the outer and inner portion of her upper eyelid. Once I'm done laying down the black lashes with black watercolor paint, I go in with white watercolor paint and I paint a couple of lashes just next to the black ones on the outer portion of the lower lash line. This just makes it so that it's not quite as dark in that area, it brightens it up a little bit. 
I don't typically do this, but I decided since her head was like so dang big, I wanted her eyebrows to have a little bit more detail. So I'm going in with a light peach on the pink side and adding a couple different strokes of brow hair with that and then a mint on the green side and doing the same thing over there. The last stage of a face up that I like to do is adding white dots around the waterline, the inner corner, the lips, and the cheeks. These are human individual false lashes. I just take these and I start applying them to her upper lash line with Elmer's glue all. After I get them to a point that I like, I start trimming them down. I like to have the inner corner shorter and then as it goes out, it's longer so it looks like it's flared. I apply Vallejo gloss varnish to her lips and waterline and a little bit on the tip of her nose. It just makes it, it's like not super obvious, but it just makes the tip of her nose a little glowy. It's cute. To insert her eyes in, I use a bit of poster putty and I just like wrap a snake of it around the eyes and push them in really hard. And this is what she looks like. So at this point, I'll be honest with you. I was like, ooh, this is real cute. But then after a couple days, I decided I didn't like the lashes. They were just like a little bit too thick and spiky for me. So I took them off. I was worried that taking the lashes off would damage her face up, but it didn't, which is good. For the new lashes, I pushed her inside eyes in a little bit just so that I wouldn't get glue in them. So she's gonna look like this for a little bit. She a little derpy. The new lashes are these, which are actually from a personal collection, which means they bit on my eyes, which might be gross, but it's my doll, so I don't care. Um, I cut them into thirds and then I glued them back on with Elmer's glue wall, and I just like them a lot better. They're way fluffier. I just feel like they suit her more. On to the clothes. So we are again fully committing to the whole half and half thing and I wanted to make her a baby doll dress because when I've seen rainbow high dolls it's just kind of my favorite fit on them. So I'm sewing the skirt good side to good side. I then hem the bottom of the skirt. I sew the two pieces of the top together good side to good side and hem the top of the top. I also hem the back of the top and where the closure is going to be. I sew the front and the back of the top together at the side seam. Now for decorating, we're going to be decorating the bottom of her skirt with the work. So ribbons and bows and pearls. I decided that her skirt was a little bit too long, so I'm cutting off some of that length at the top of the skirt. We then add a gather stitch to the top of the skirt. I 
I wanted her to have a mesh purple fabric underneath the top of her dress with poofy sleeves. So that's what we're doing. I am sewing the top together at the shoulders and then the side seam. I gather stitched the top and the bottom of the sleeve and at the bottom of the sleeve I also sewed that to a strip of fabric. I sewed the sleeve up into a tube and then flipped it. After it was flipped I sewed the sleeves in place. I decided she needs a frilly collar because honestly who doesn't so I gather stitched a bit of lace and sewed that to her neckline. And this is almost her finished dress, but we gotta have some underskirts. So I took this giant strip of tulle and I sewed together the sides. Once those sides were sewed up, I filled the tulle with glitter. And um, so I thought all this glitter was like nice and chunky, but some of it was small, which meant it got all over my desk, which was great. After that was all filled up and I got glitter everywhere, I sewed up the top and I gather stitched it. And this is it in all of its glittery glory. I kind of love it. I also created another underskirt out of this purple lace. I wanted to give her a star charm because one, I have a million of them, and two, I thought it looked cute. So I sewed this to her dress with embroidery thread. I want to give her a little witchy self a cape. So I sewed these two pieces of fabric good side to good side, hemmed the top sides and bottom, and gave it a trim of green ribbon to the bottom of the cape. I also sewed ribbon to the top of the side so that I can tie the cape together. The ribbon at the top was a little much, so I trimmed it down. She needed some stockings, so I cut out two pieces for the stockings and I sewed them together all around the sides and flipped them. Every witch needs a hat, so instead of a circular base, I wanted to have more of like a flowery one, so I traced around this thing and I cut out the fabric for it. So that satiny purple fabric right there is because I wanted her hat to have a lining. These two triangle pieces are for the top of her hat. I sewed together these two pieces of fabric good side to good side and then sewed the lining in place. I hemmed the base of the hat as well. For the top of the hat, I sewed together the two pieces of fabric and flipped it. I sewed the top and the base of the hat together good side to good side. And she's done! She's a hat, y'all. I don't have I ever made a hat before? I don't think I've ever made a hat. No, I made a hat like last week, so <laughs> never mind. Now she a fancy witch, so we gotta decorate her hat. So I added a lace trim to the bottom of her hat, and I also made a bow out of this purple stuff that left glitter all over my desk, which is basically this entire project was just making my desk hella dirty. I feel like this method is a really easy way to make a giant bow. So you just like mish, m mish, what? You mush some fabric in the middle and then you cut the two little like ribbony bottom parts. You wrap a ribbon around the middle of the bow and then you sew the little ribbony bottom parts together. And then voila, you just hot glue it in place. Beautiful. I 
I also hot glued some flowers onto the base of her hat and this like big old pastel star thing that I found that I've been waiting months to use. I picked it up from the craft store and I was like, I'm gonna use this in a custom. And then <laughs> it just didn't like apply to any of the customs that I've been making. So I was like, must incorporate this into her hat, even if it's ugly. Onto shoes, so I wanted her to have like little booties, so I am cutting down the shoes that she came with with my X-Acto blade. I wanted her to have like stereotypical kind of swirly witch shoes. So what we're gonna do is I'm taking a wire and I am curling it in place and hot gluing it to the front of her shoes as a armature. I wrap epoxy sculpt around the wire and smooth it into place. I'm sanding the shoes once they dry and I'm sanding them over this dust collector which is a pretty useful thing if you guys do sanding in your house. It just sucks up the dust. I wanted her shoes to have a little bit more texture so I wrapped a wire around the curly bit of her shoe. I painted her shoes blue and pink and also I have these like foam stars. I painted one of those blue and one of those pink because we're going to be attaching them to the back of her boot. I decided that her shoes just weren't bougie enough, so I covered them in glue and then I covered them in glitter. This is how her little witchy boots turned out. I think they're really cute. Like I really, really like them. I like the little curly bit in the stars. Now on to her wand. So I wanted this to look like a wand, but like a magical girl wand. So I'm taking some wire and I am twisting that and I hot glued a pearl to the top. I wrapped epoxy sculpt around the armature wire, twisting it into place. I wrap a wire around the wand to give a texture. I paint the wand a pastel purple. I 
I wrapped this pink ribbon around the wand, hot gluing it into place. Moving on to the body, oh lord, y'all ready for this? So I tried to take the panties off with non-acetone nail polish remover, nothing happened. So I took acetone nail polish remover and tried to wipe the panties off. It was working, but it, like there was still some orange residue on her like butt and stuff. I decided I was just gonna paint over that. I did the Papa Atelier uh, hack where she dremels down the middle of the joint and it makes it so it's double jointed. This is like the easiest thing ever, by the way. I don't know why MGA just didn't do this with their joints because it's so easy and it makes the dolls double jointed. It works really well, so kudos to Poppin. This is brilliant. Let's move on to the neck joint, the dreaded neck joint. So I saw a hack on Instagram where someone made the uh, neck joint so that the head could go back and forth and tilt and stuff. And all you had to do was take the joint out of the neck. Um, you just have to pull it out. I tried heating it up with a hairdryer. I tried heating it up with hot water. It would not come out at all. So I cut the top of the neck joint off and I drilled into the neck. You're then supposed to take a screw eye and screw that into the top piece of the neck joint so you don't throw that away you keep it screw the screw eye into the top piece of the neck joint when i drilled though i drilled too far so i figured it would be fine because when i was trying to get the screw eye into the neck and like finagle it in there it was a really tight fit however the screw eye fell into the body and it was in there and it was like jiggling around so i had to cut the doll in half to get it out at this point, I'd been working on this hack for the neck for about four hours. Um, it wasn't working. I was extremely frustrated and I've been having a bad month. So I decided, screw this. <laughs> and I bought one of the cheerleader rainbow high dolls to harvest her body. <laughs> Could I have probably fixed the body that I completely ruined? Yes. But I've been having a really bad month. <laughs> My cat got diagnosed with asthma and diabetes and it was just really stressful. So I was just like, whatever, I'm buying a new body. I'm not doing this. I'm tired. I want to finish this doll. So I painted over her panties this time. I blushed her body with the same tones that I used on her face. So pinks, reds, blues, and browns. And I did that same pop and hack that I did earlier to the back of her knee. I'd like to mention that that rainbow high neck peg hack has worked for a lot of people so um it might work for you if you want to try it i mean i'm not gonna try it again but if you want to try it maybe do that at your own discretion i believe the person who started that hack was requiem arts she has a blog post on it that i will link in the description box maybe i missed something maybe you're really good at taking neck pegs out of necks I'm obviously not, <laughs> so yeah, I'll link that down below. I heated her head up and put her little head, well, not her little head, her big head back on, and here she is with all her stuff. I love her so much, my little witchy queen. Well, my little witchy magical girl pastel queen. So I really like how she turned out. It was so fun painting one of these dolls. Do you guys like these dolls, by the way? Um, I know that there's some like, well, I think most people like them, but some people are like, no, I hate them. <laughs> I like them. I like their big heads. I definitely prefer dolls that are more kind of realistic proportions or Monster High dolls better than these dolls, but I definitely want to give Sunny a face up and let her be her full Sailor Moon little self. It's just always fun painting new doll lines or when new doll lines come out. Um, and I'm kind of obsessed. Well, I really want Karma. If you guys have been keeping up with the Rainbow High Dolls, Karma's like the tan one with like the bright, bright neon green hair. And I think she's like the cutest thing ever. And I really want her. But like, no, I don't need any more Rainbow High Dolls because what am I doing? Um, anyway, like this video if you like this video. Subscribe makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye, guys.